<laughs> okay, there's a few words in memory of Mike Phillips by Malcolm Cutler. Because there were people in our class who everyone knew or at least knew all about. A number of those classmates have come to this reunion. The other end of the spectrum were some people who few knew or even knew uh, much about. I think I'm right in saying that Mike Phillips was one of those people in our class. But he, he was one of my best, uh, three best friends in the class. And when it came to talking about my social life, there wasn't much of it, but I had lots to say about it. And he was the one I talked to more than anyone else. And those of us who did know Mike were, in most, maybe all cases, part of the classical music crowd, playing different instruments. Some of us were quite talented. Now, as this is Malcolm Cotler speaking of <laughs> They're the ones who are still playing their instruments. Others, like me, were less talented and don't play anymore. But Mike was different from the rest of us, I think. He not only played his instruments, the piano and viola, he also composed music. It seemed to me that Mike lived mostly for music. For him, it was something that went beyond what it was for the rest of us. Mike was not as good at playing his instrument as Hung was at playing his violin. <laughs> but I think I'm quite right that Mike was a preeminent musician among us. He did go to music school at IU. I don't think anyone else in the class went to music school. But I don't know what happened yeah. after IU and Mike's musical life. I don't know because, for reasons I don't fully know, we lost touch with each other not long after 1970. I like to think that if Mike were alive today, we would be in touch again. And I like to think that we would have reestablished the closeness we once had. I still think about Mike, so I can say he is still with me, not in the way I wish. And do you have? Um, I just like to say that Mike Phillips' mother, Ann Straley Phillips, called me last night and she was so pleased that this was going on. And she said it meant so much to her to know that Mike had people that still remember him. And she just wanted us to know that he was precious to her. And uh, she was just just so so thankful that we were doing this. So I have one more here. This oh, is from uh, Patty Palmer. Who said she didn't Spence? Luann. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Luann, you had something else about Mike. Oh, Mike? Okay, yeah. No. Uh, I won't correct Malcolm. There was one other in the class. <laughs> two others. Of, well, yeah, two others of, of us that went to music school at Indiana. Barbara Bradley oh, and Mike yeah. and myself. And I used yeah. to see them all the time after school. I mean, after we were done here. Uh, Mike majored in composition and then switched to library science. And at some point, we, I went off in a different major in the music school and you drift away. But he had been my best friend in grade school, my very bestest friend, and uh, inseparable. And it was all about music. That was all that mattered. And we would, um, some of you that may remember, were Mr. Leap's class may remember the uh, plays that we used to do of the Greek mythology, because Mike was on a Greek mythology kick. <laughs> so we would do these plays based on various Greek myths. And we would play, uh, I'd go over to his house, and we'd play music and just do stuff and sing stuff. He went down on the Gilbert and Sullivan kick. So I can remember when, I was, when we were in high school, he gathered some of us and we did Gilbert and Sullivan stuff. <laughs> he was the ringleader for a lot of the musical activities of the classical music crew. And uh, I was shocked when I heard that he was gone. Um, I reconnected late with the class for a number of reasons. And um, not to do with the class. And just absolutely, Steve Helmreich told me, and I, was, I would so hope to see him again, but wasn't to be. But I, I think of him all the time. I mean, could I say one thing? Something that um, Mike certainly, uh, Malcolm said it beautifully in terms of, yeah. of my, Michael's musical talents, but oh. actually, if he wanted to, he could have been an athlete too. Uh, I remember in an eighth grade track and field, much to his reluctance, uh, he was forced to run in the 100 meter dash and he placed second with oh, wow. no track shoes. Yeah. <laughs> so, he, could have been, he could have been an athlete but he, if he wanted, but music was his love. Yeah. <laughs> We're, we don't have to run one person down the road all the way, but if you get something to say about Mike, 
stories. Um, once he and I were talking, and um, Mozart's Symphony Number no. 41, the Jupiter Symphony, came up in the conversation. That did, that sort of thing did happen with Mike. <laughs> and, uh, he said it was the key of G. And I said, no, you see. And he looked at me and thought of it and decided I was right. But it obviously bothered him, but I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> so I explained that the, the launch rocket that was being used to put up satellites at the time was the Jupiter C rocket. So I knew that the Jupiter Symphony was in the sea. He'd come over and, and borrow records from us. And once when he was returning a stack of records, he, uh, he said he, he found someone with a really good stereo system and he could listen to this one. And he said, it, it really shouldn't matter. That you ought to be able to hear the notes and understand what the composer was doing. And, and that ought to be enough. But he said, you know, it really makes a difference when it sounds good. <laughs> I listened. I was expecting to hear his music a long time into the future. We lost him. <laughs>